I remember when I was a little kid, my mom was tucking me into bed one night and she told me that if I ever needed anything, that I could pray to Mary, Jesus's mother, and ask her. And because she's Jesus's mother, he'll listen to anything that she asks of him. Now, she may have been a little bit biased being a mother herself, and maybe slightly overstated a son's willingness to obey his mom, but it does raise an interesting question. I mean, a lot of churches advocate for the praying to saints, and some would even argue, as my mom did, that praying to saints might even be more effective than just us praying directly to God. So is this the case? Are we encouraged to pray to those who have come before us? And what does the Bible have to say? Let's take a look. So, per our usual with these types of discussions, there is a little bit of fat which needs to be cut away before we can get to the real meat of the discussion. There are always people that argue over the peripherals, things that are not at the core of the discussion. For example, some people might say that praying to saints is wrong because it's idolatry, and people who do that are worshiping things that are not God. You know, we see statues of saints sometimes in churches. In Exodus 24 through 5 says, you shall not make for yourself an image in the form of anything in heaven above or on the earth beneath or in the waters below. You shall not bow down to them or worship them for I, the Lord, am your God. The thing is, though, theologically speaking, proponents of praying to saints are not worshiping the statues. These are primarily, but not exclusively, Catholic. And the Catholic Church condemns both polytheism and idolatry alike, period. They do not allow worshiping anything other than God. What they do allow is praying to the saints in order to ask for their intercession. An intercessory prayer is something that's very biblical. James 5.16 tells us, Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. So we are supposed to come to each other for prayer. It is not only biblically acceptable, but it is encouraged that you ask others to pray to God on your behalf or intercede for you. So, so far, all this is on the up and up. The question really is, the sticking point that really causes the divide here amongst Christians is the fact that the saints are not living, at least living in the same way that they were on earth. They have been unalived. So the logic here is that that those who have passed on, those who are dead, are in heaven in communion with God, and therefore perhaps have a better line of sight to God than we do on earth. I mean, it makes logical sense. We could ask Grandpa to intercede for us, but he drank a lot and was a little bit racist, so better ask St. Peter instead. Safer bet. So the main question here really boils down to can and should we ask for prayers from those who have died? This could also be coupled with the question, are those who have died currently in heaven now, or is it more like they are asleep in which they will be awakened when Jesus comes back to judge both the living and the dead? We see in 1 Corinthians 15, 20, but Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. This verse implies that Jesus was raised from the dead, and he is one of the first to be raised, meaning that everyone else will follow. But for now, it's as if they are asleep. So this is one interpretation. And this would mean that the people who have died cannot intercede on behalf of the living, because their consciousness is not in heaven yet. And this is a possibility. But the Bible is not so cut and dry regarding this. In Mark 9, 2 through 4, Jesus brings a couple of his disciples to a mountaintop. And he here we're told, his clothes became dazzling white, whiter than anyone in the world could bleach them. And there appeared before him Elijah and Moses, who were talking with Jesus. And Elijah and Moses have been dead for hundreds of years before Jesus' birth. Now, we don't know exactly what they talked about or how this came to pass from a theological standpoint, but presumably Jesus didn't have to explain to Elijah and Moses who he was. One would think if Elijah and Moses died hundreds of years ago and then were suddenly awakened on a mountaintop talking to Jesus, they'd probably be disoriented or confused. But the passage here seems to imply familiarity. Additionally, there are also a number of verses that do imply people are in heaven now, but they're certainly 
really up for interpretation. Like many scriptures regarding the afterlife, timing is a strange variable. For example, in Revelations 8, 4, John describes a vision that he sees. With the prayers of all God's people on the golden altar in front of the throne, the smoke of the incense together with the prayers of God's people went up before God from the angel's hand. But is John seeing an image of a future heaven or what is actually happening right now? Similarly, Jesus says in Luke 15, I tell you that in the same way, there will be more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous persons who do not need to repent. But again, the timing here is a little bit fuzzy. The Greek word here for there will be is I me. And it's not exactly present or future tense. It can be both. So I'm certainly not the final word on religious practices at the end of the day. But we can look at the life and teachings of Jesus. And we do know that he does not teach us to pray to those who have died. He teaches us to start off our prayer by saying, Our Father who is in heaven, directing them to God. Do I think it's a sin to ask for saints to intercede in our behalf? No, I do not. But there aren't really many examples in scripture of this happening. And there's also really not a need to do it because Jesus is enough. Romans 8.34 tells us, Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. So Jesus is the greatest intercessor of them all. But like the verse also says, it's not our place to condemn anyone. And if people are earnestly asking for intercession, God still hears them. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. I do read them all, but sometimes it takes me a while to respond. If you enjoyed the video, please feel free to like and subscribe. It does help out the channel. I'll leave the verses used here today in the description below. My name is Adam. This is Bargain Bit Theology. And remember, you get what you pay for.